The iPad mini is by far my most used piece of tech. I use it not just to consume media like watch movies or TV shows or YouTube. I also use it as a baby monitor when my son takes a nap or when he's in the car and he wants to watch something. I also use it in client calls when I'm taking down notes or jotting down an idea for a YouTube video. So there's a lot of different ways I already use this in my everyday life, but I also use it a lot during my creative work like for photo and video. So I think this is a great addition to anyone's kit. This is currently the smallest iPad that Apple makes and I think it's a really good sweet spot for something that's portable. So if you want to compare it to like, let's say a phone, this is an iPhone 13 Pro. And as you can tell, the display is substantially bigger, but it's still quite portable. So what I like to usually do is I take this iPad with me. I take my Ricoh GR3. I also like to take like an RX100 Mark V or even the Ricoh GR1, which is a film camera. And it all fits in a small bag and it's still quite portable. What I love about the iPad mini is that I can edit in Lightroom on the go. And I use that quite a bit on my phone as well. So I, love, I do a lot of my social media posts, just I edit it on my phone or on my iPad. So that means that not every single photo that I take makes it into the iPad, especially because I have the 64 gig version. So 64 gigs is not a lot of storage to put every single picture that you take, especially if you're a digital shooter, you, you know that that could take up a lot of space. So usually what I do is I pick a handful of photos that I do feel like have some potential or that I wanna edit right away and I pick those and I put them right into Lightroom. The two main ways that I use to import my photos right into my iPad is either using an app or using an SD card reader. Both the Ricoh GR3 and the Q2, which are my two favorite cameras, have iPad apps, which is great because I can either import JPEGs if I want to share it with social media, with family, but also allows me to have RAWs if I want to edit in Lightroom. So I've already done reviews on the Ricoh GR3 and the Q2, so I'm not going to go through the process of importing them through that direction. So if you are interested, I have a like a Q2 guide. I also have a, a new review on the Ricoh GR3, so I'll link both of those videos in the description and then somewhere up here. But I also want to explain how you can import your photos with this and what that looks like. Once you connect your SD card to the card reader, you can open up Lightroom and open up right from the SD card. So your camera photos will be right there and you can look through them and select which ones you want. You can go back, you can go right to the photo and look at it, but I'll not just look at it, but you can also edit it. And I like to edit on the Apple Pencil and it's super useful even if not you're not doing like fine tune edits. It's also really useful to just be able to um, interact with the picture really nicely. So like the shadows, the exposure, and not just that, you, you get your not just your basic settings like light, color, effects, detail, optics, and geometry. You also get things like your presets. So if you have your own personal presets, it'll be right here. But if you like to also edit with uh, Lightroom profiles, you also have them right here and they sync through all of your devices. So I like to use these Kodak Pro profiles that I got from the Art of... I'll put the, the title of it here, what they're called, uh, Darketype Process. So if you like to do one click edits, you can also do that. So just importing it to a profile, looking what it looks like. You can see it right on the app. You can pinch to zoom. So there's tons of ways you can use the iPad to just edit. So if you like to do just one click edits, you can do that. But if you like to further dial down what you like to, um, how you like your photos to look, you can do that. So it's super helpful to be able to see what you're editing even if you're not in front of a computer and if you are happy with your edit, you can export it right from the from the app. So you can just share it if you wanna share it right to social media or if you like to you know, send it to a friend, you can do that. So for example, last month I went on a cruise and I took this photo on my Q2. I don't really travel with a laptop, so I wanted to edit it right away. So I imported it right into my iPad and I went straight to work. So I changed the aspect ratio. I usually like to do uh, four by five and I realized I didn't like it in landscape. So I changed the aspect ratio and everything. So I made sure that it was right where I wanted it. I straightened it out a little bit. So once I was happy with that, I went right into editing. So the cool thing is it has all my profiles that I like to use and even the ones from my desktop. So I usually like to do like say a portrait 400 and with these specific profiles, what they do, it, it tends to darken your photos. So it's nice that you can lower and raise your exposure. So I wanted to raise my exposure here just a little bit and it already started to look something a little bit more pleasing. And I also like to play around with the color. So I brought up the vibrance the saturation I put on with the shadows and the highlights a little bit I realized that maybe I want it to be a little bit warmer than intended just to pop out some more of that warm tones in the photo and so it's already starting to look at like a picture that I uh, enjoy editing 
And then what I also like to do is play around with the curves. So it's really nice because you get a lot of the same features you do in the regular Lightroom. So if you want to do like an S curve or something like that, you can do that. So like if you want to do this and you can see your edits in real time. So if you raise it or you lower it, you can see it all. I made sure that there was nothing else I wanted to change. And for now, it's more of a simple edit, but I was really happy with this photo. And as you can tell, you can tap, tap on it and you'll see the original and then your edit. So it's really nice to be able to just do it with your finger or with an Apple pencil. It makes everything a lot more tactile. So it makes me a lot more engaged whenever I edit photos and it makes editing a lot more fun. Another useful way that I use the iPad mini is to use it as an external monitor. I use the Monitor Plus app on my iPads. Whenever I'm on my, my desk, I like to use my bigger iPad for that. But when I'm on the go, I like to use the iPad mini. And I can actually show you what it looks like in real time because I'm actually using it right at the second. So this is what my view looks like from uh, my camera here. And this is what the Monitor Plus app sees, which is really useful if you're someone who likes to shoot an s lock 3 you can use a LUT for that here right on the ipad and you can check all your settings if you want to check your focus there's a lot of filmmaker um, features right onto the app so it's really useful and you can have it just on a regular size ipad or on the ipad mini so if you're someone who travels a lot and you don't want to bring an external monitor and you have an ipad already this is an, an excellent way to be able to um, frame your shots or use anything other than the small monitor on your camera I honestly think this is the best iPad that Apple currently makes. I know they have more powerful ones with the M1 chip, but honestly, you can do most of the things you can do with those. It's smaller, it's cheaper, it's more portable. So it's my favorite Apple product of all time. Thank you so much for watching this week's video and thank you for all the love in the last video. I have a couple more videos down the line. So if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.